Hi everybody. In the last several videos, we've been talking about Dr. Bredesen's first book, published in 2017, that had served as the first playbook for my dad, The End of Alzheimer's, the first program to prevent and reverse cognitive decline. We've talked about key areas of the book, like why past attempts at a cure had failed before Bredesen, what Alzheimer's really is, the 36 holes in the roof, and a brief overview of the recode protocol. In this video, we're going to start diving in deeper into the details and really unpacking recode. So, quick recap. Dr. Bredesen's team found that the body was producing amyloid and downsizing its communication network on purpose as part of a protective response. The cognitive decline and symptoms associated with Alzheimer's were the brain struggled to defend itself from three classes of threats. Number one, inflammation from infection, diet, or other causes. Number two, decline and shortage of necessary nutrients, hormones, and brain supportive compounds. And number three, toxic exposures like heavy metals, chemical toxins, or biological toxins produced by bacterial, fungal, parasitic, and or viral infections. While past therapies had just tried to remove amyloid, Dr. Bredesen actually got people better because he decided to treat the true issues upstream that were actually stimulating the amyloid production and cognitive downsizing in the first place. To get patients better, Bredesen simply decided to identify which of the threats a patient's brain was responding to treat and remove them so their brains could heal. Bredesen achieved this with the majority of his patients in his 2014 study, which we've talked about with the MEN protocol. By 2017, Bredesen had helped many more patients achieve similar results, and MEN had evolved into the RECODE protocol, reversal of cognitive decline. RECODE was a personalized program that addressed multiple factors to help the body and brain patch up those 36 holes in the roof we had talked about. It was tailored to how every patient tested at the beginning of the protocol. So that an appropriate program could be drawn up for each patient, there would need to be a personalized evaluation to see where they stood with all the factors. Dr. Bredesen calls this the cognoscopy. Like the standard colonoscopy we received at the age of 50 to screen for and prevent colorectal cancer, Bredesen's firm position is that when we reach the age of 45, we should all have a standard cognoscopy to screen for all the potential contributors and risk factors for cognitive decline. All of these tests and lab results paint a clear picture of where a patient stands and how they got there. It also helps us prioritize which areas need more attention and optimization for better cognitive function. So let's go through most of the key areas of the evaluation. Genetics. Testing for at least one key gene that makes us more predisposition to cognitive decline, which we'll talk about in future videos. Inflammation levels. Underlying inflammation in the body and brain is a key player in Alzheimer's. The more inflamed our tissues, the faster every one of our cells age and fall into disrepair, so the inflammatory fire must be put out. Infections. Many of these fly under the radar undetected for years. Some common ones found are herpes simplex 1, Borrelia, which is associated with Lyme disease, and the fungal infection Candida, among others. Homocysteine. This marker is very under-tested, but very easy to obtain when asked for. When the amount of this amino acid circulating in the bloodstream rises, it is a very strong predictor of future heart attack, stroke, and cognitive decline. It typically doesn't get the air time it deserves, but we'll definitely be diving deeper on homocysteine in the future. Key nutrients, like vitamin B1, B6, B12, B9, or folate, and vitamin D3. Fasting insulin levels. This is a critical biomarker that can point to how insulin sensitive or resistant someone is. The more insulin sensitive, the better their blood sugar markers, the better their metabolic health. The more insulin resistant, the worse their blood sugar numbers, the more dysfunctional their metabolic health. High insulin and high glucose are two of the most important risk factors for Alzheimer's as they drive a lot more dysfunction downstream. So correcting these, especially with diet and nutrition, is so important. Hormonal status. Hormones functioning properly are crucial to optimal brain function. Some important ones to test for being thyroid, estrogen, progesterone, testosterone, cortisol, pregnenolone, and DHEA. Toxic exposures. We talked a little bit about those already, but some repeat offenders that commonly come up when tested for are heavy metals, especially mercury, and mycotoxins, the toxins produced by indoor molds growing in water-damaged areas of our homes and buildings. Sleep status. 
Getting enough sleep for rest and repair is crucial for our well-being, which is why screening for sleep apnea is really important, as it is commonly undiagnosed. The quality of our sleep will drive the quality of the growth, repair, and detoxification mechanisms that turn on when we're not awake. Body mass index. BMI has long been a risk factor. The higher and more overweight this marker shows, typically the higher the insulin resistance, the more metabolic dysfunction. So it's got to get resolved. Volumetrics and imaging. MRIs, PET scans, and even retinal imaging can give us a clear picture of the state of the brain and how it's utilizing energy. Cognitive testing. Some commonly used tests to see where we're at with our cognitive abilities are the MOCA, the MMSC, and the SAGE tests. And we'll get into those in future videos. I know, it's a lot. But when you're preventing or reversing something as challenging as Alzheimer's, no stone goes unturned. In the next video, we'll get into simplifying next steps and how you actually get tested for all these factors. If you found this information helpful, please feel free to share this video with anyone you think it could serve. And remember, I'm not a doctor. I don't have a PhD. I'm a caregiver and a citizen researcher on the ground, helping a loved one, someone just like you. This information is for educational purposes only. Please consult your medical practitioner before implementing any changes. Thank you for watching. My dad thanks you. Hope these resources are helpful to you and your family, and see you in the next video. Thanks.